Check out Paddy Power's new and exclusive Cash Card Plus. Available to use online, at ATMs or even down the local. Paddy Power, you beauty. Hello and welcome to Monday's Postcast. I'm Maddie Plow and I'm joined by Nick Watts, Tom Segal and Paddy Power's Paul Binfield. Well, what a weekend it was. Absolutely superb end to the jump racing season. A brilliant climax at Punchestown and Sandown. Um, but we've, all, of course, also had some really exciting and informative classic trials this week to get our teeth stuck into. Um, we're going to revisit the jumps. We're going to look back over the jumps. But first, let's have a look at the classic. Um, starting with you, Nick, did you have a good profitable weekend? How was it? It was all right, actually. Yeah, not too bad. I, I did something I very rarely do, and I, I, I backed Willie Mullins a few weeks ago to retain his title, and I, I thought it all slipped away at one stage oh, last week bravo. after Nichols Canyon got beat, but somehow he managed to wrestle it around, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, extraordinary. Um, Tom, how was your weekend? Uh, it got better on Sunday. It was all right for most of it. I, sh I, I felt like I was in the zone for, for Punchestown, but I did a sort of as badly as I possibly I won a few quid but I could have, I did as badly as I possibly could really despite having a few winners so it was a bit frustrating I sort of I felt I was there but nothing really happened and like like Nick one of the best results was Willie Mullins I think I, I, I like him I backed mm. him a few months ago and it's nice to see him sneak up he could have been so much better I mean if you think about Mullins this year he didn't have Votor or Forheen or any power and quite a few of the rich Richie horses didn't perform did they so for him to come up and you know late on and win Mm. Amazing achievement. Yeah, I thought um, with Paul Nichols and Nicky Henderson and then obviously the the one with Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins, it was all really refreshing to just see trainers do things that they wouldn't normally do. Um, Paul, are you all right? Everything OK? Very well, thanks, Maddie. Yeah, I had a nice relaxing day at Punchestown on Saturday. Uh, spent most of yesterday in bed and um, they're calling me Bank, Hall Bank Holiday Binfield in the office now because I always get the Bank Holidays. Paddy and Bruce always seem to be off surfing or whatever they do on Bank Holiday surfing? Monday. <laughs> no way. I don't have Paddy Power down as a surfer. Yeah, no, he's a great surfer. He loves to get down to good. Right, uh, the next time he's on, I'm getting in. What is, what's that bloke called? Who was the mate? Who was the surfing dude who used to be? Who was the world champion? Nick, you'll remember. God, I, I don't know surfing. I was God. thinking of Eddie the Eagle, but he's the ski jumper, isn't he? <laughs> it's left to me to sail this sinking ship yes, already. Yes, exactly. Sorry, Maddie. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> right, um, so we'll come back to the jumps, but let's start off with the 2,000 guineas. How do you bet, Paul, first off? Uh, well, we're 15 to 8 um, favourite Churchill, Maddie. Al Wu Care at, at 7 to 2. Richard Hannon's Barney Roy at 4 to 1. Eminent, who you're papers bigging up today on the front page 11 to 2 and then it's 14 to 1 bar okay brilliant um first off do we think churchill is beatable and if so who are we going to side with start with you nick yeah I, I think he is beatable um I, I don't like the price of him for a start um and i know this time last year we talked about air force blue like he was the second coming and and he wasn't cited all season so you're never quite sure with aiden's horses if he is going to be brilliant or if he's going to be one of these you know, Air Force Blue type horses. He was workman like last year. He wasn't. He, he never looked outstanding to me. He just kind of got the kept getting the I job agree, done. Yeah. Um, and I always go back to his Ascot win. You know, he won the Chesham at Royal Ascot, and nothing ever, any good normally comes out of the Chesham. Um, mm. I look back through his history, and no, you know, fantastic three-year-olds have ever won that race. So it might have been an above-average renewal last year because Kunko was third in it, and he won last week. So. And you can't blame the horse for, for going there and doing it. But nice. I thought the trials threw up some decent uh, alternatives to him. There was the French horse, Al I thought Eminent looked very good. And you've got the Godolphin too, Barney Roy and Dreamcastle. So I think it's much more open than the betting suggests. Mm, I don't know about anyone else, but I watched that uh, Greenham and I just thought it looked like such a classy race. I um, really liked the way Barney Roy went about it. It would be interesting to see how their careers play out at this stage. Tom, anything tickle you fancy in the Guineas market? Well, I'm... well. I, I backed or tipped uh, for the paper a few months ago. Al Care at a massive price. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. I am worried about very fast ground for him. He's by Dream Ahead. And I'd be worried coming down the hill there if it got very quick. But I think oh, the, the Farber boys are, are very, very keen on him. He's got was, a great record at Newmarket as well, hasn't he? He has. And I was reading somewhere the other day 
Harry Herbert was saying that one of the, the main work riders for, for Andre Fabre, who's been there for years and years and years, thinks that Al Uker is the best horse he's ever ridden. Wow. You think, you know, they, they really, really love him. But, I, you know, it was something about him in the Jebel was slightly disconcerting for me, the way he got behind. Uh, he's by Dream Ahead, as I say, whether he's not really fast ground. I'm with you, Maddie. I thought Barney Roy moved like a, a, like a tremendous horse at, at Newbury in the Green and really got low. Very few horses move like he does. He got really low and really stretched, and I thought he would be my one. As for Churchill, I just think he's a bad price. I don't think he's beaten a good horse yet. I can't believe uh, just just going by Aidan O'Brien's sort of modus operandi. He's, he's likely to want the horse to progress as the season goes mm. on. Now you can win a two thousand guineas like that. He's done it many times, but the horses have got better as the after the two thousand guineas. And the difference between this and maybe Camelot's or Henry the Navigators or whatever it was, this is a really, really good race. Mm. Those three trial winners are really, really good. For me, if I was making a market for myself, he'd be the fourth in for me. He'd be the one I would yeah. fancy least of the four because I've seen them do win their trials. And so yeah. for me, he's a bad price. But I, look, I I'm, agree. I'm not, not saying he can't win because he's trained by Edno O'Brien. He's won every race and he's by Galileos. But seven to four is wrong. Yeah, I think a lot of the time, as you say, Edno O'Brien likes his horses to sort of progress naturally throughout their seasons. And Churchill... For me, in a lot of cases, I mean, you saw it with Order of St. George, fair enough, he was giving the others weight the other day, but I feel like he doesn't have them as ready as sometimes he can um, first time out. So, like you, I think at the prices, having, you know, seen the trials and been quite impressed with the trials for both um, this and the, and the Phillies version, um, I think it might be wise just to play alive to that a little bit. Um, talking of the Phillies, we'll move on to the 1,000 guineas on Sunday. Um, and whether Aidan O'Brien can win his third Guineas in six years with Rhododendron, who won the Phillies Mile last year really impressively. Again, if I could ask you for the betting, Paul, any thoughts you have on the 1,000 Guineas as well? Um, and then we'll move on to, to our fancies in the race. Yeah, um, Rhododendron's 5-2 to two favourite. Fair Eva at eight, along with Dabya, who won for one of the trials for John Gosden. Daban on 8-1 to one as well. 10-1 to one Hydrangea and 12-1 to one Bar. Um, I, I, unlike you, you lot, I do think Churchill's unbeatable in the uh, 2000 guineas, but I would say... <laughs> we know what's going to happen on. then. <laughs> Sorry? We know what's going to happen then. He's going to go and win now. Well, you never know, but I, I, don't, I think Rhoda Denver's more takeable on. Um, she got beaten in the Moy Glab, admittedly on yielding ground, but it, the, the two in front of her, 25 to 1 and O'Brien's third string, so I'd take her on. Um, John Gosden, two strong... Strong, strong arrows. It looks like um, Daban's going to be his one in England, and Dabyar will go to France. Um, and at eight to one, I think Daban is is a nice each way price to to make the frame. Yeah, I totally agree. I think she probably didn't get enough credit for her win in the Nelgwin. She does need to improve, but equally, you know, she's very inexperienced. She did that really well. Nick, what's your? Thoughts? Yeah, she did. She did do very well. Um, I mean, what we said about Churchill, it pertains to rhododendron as yeah, well. And yeah. it's her first, you know, aiming to win it on, on a seasonal return. And I'm sure she'll get better as the season progresses. Um, some of these have been winning trials. One who hasn't, which I'm interested in, uh, is Fair Eva, Roger Charlton's horse, because she looked an absolutely world beater to me when, you know, she won her first two starts last season. Um, the wheels came off a bit on the last two. She was beating the odds on both times. But I'm convinced she, you know, we didn't see the best of her and she's better than she showed there. And, it's just interesting Roger Charlton is happy to go there. He didn't feel he needed a trial for her. He's going straight there. There seems to be an underlying bit of confidence behind her. Mm. Um, I'd be interested in her uh, very much so. I'm not sure what price she is. I think she's third favourite at the moment. But yeah. Fair Eva for me is, is an interesting horse. Yeah, I mean, sort of on a line through that, I have a similar sort of case to, to put forward. And, and Fair Eva has been very well backed. One with a similar profile is actually Queen Kindly, who fell out of the stalls, had absolutely no chance in the Fred Darling. Um, but she actually ran on really well. Now, she's by Lady of the Desert, so she's got a very fast pedigree. But I do think Frankels do tend to stay quite well. And again, that prep run... Obviously, it wasn't ideal because she was never really in with a chance, but she did stay. Um, she did stay on really nicely through beat horses, and I just think the price difference between Fair Eva and Queen Kindly, Queen Kindly's beaten her. Um, I think that's quite an interesting angle. But like you say, the money talks possibly for Fair Eva, and I think she could run a massive race. Um, what are your thoughts, Tom? You've been reading my column, uh, Maddie, about Frankels. <laughs> about I Frankels, I think I'm they. Not, I but... think I think they stay really well too. I, I'm slightly different from you. I don't think the trials 
the Phillies trials have been that good. I'm not a great Davin fan. I think I, I get that she might hit the frame, but I don't think she's got a win chance myself. Mm. I've uh, I've backed Fair Eva. The one I'm most interested in is another of Aiden O'Brien's. I think uh, I think five of the last six runner, winners of this have had a run, something like that. I was reading the mm -hmm. other day, Legatissimo uh, and Homecoming Queen, the type of horse, you know, the cool more horses that tend to win this. Minding is obviously an exception, but look, she's just one of the best fillies we've ever seen. So Miss France had, had a run, Sky Lantern had had a run before they came on here. I like horses with a run. So although I've backed Fair Eva, I thought the Irish Leopardstown trial was as good as anything run so far this season and the horse that finished second a horse called winter of Aidan O'Brien's I see he's yeah. been back today I think he's mm -hmm. about she's about 16 to 1 from 33s I was really impressed with her she got trapped around the wide outside she finished best of all I think that form is the best trial form we've had this season if she runs uh, I would be very interested in her beating uh, her stable companion uh, hydrangea whatever one is called these days rhododendron <laughs> all, flowers. all flowers just remember that just one of the flowers <laughs> um paul what do you reckon are you, are you, do you agree with any of us or disagree or well i've, I've already made my case for daban um maddie but um, um i think your one is a huge price at 33 to one the one you Queen just came Kindly. out with yeah um and um richard well, farhey's in one. richard farhey's in such good form absolutely yeah and uh winter at 20 to one like tom says a few quid around for that today and and you know, that, that another each way chance. But I'd say a bit more open, in my opinion, than the 2,000 guineas. Yep, fair enough. We'll just take a moment now and we'll be back with you in a moment. Introducing Paddy Power's Hot Trot Jackpot, their new free-to-enter horse racing competition. Every Saturday, pick five horses in a free Lucky 31 bet for your chance to win the guaranteed £10,000 jackpot. TNC Supply, 18plusbgambleaware.org. Um, speaking of Newmarket, is there anything else we're all looking forward to seeing at Newmarket? I'm not sure if he'll go, but personally for me, Mark Johnston's Gallopiat in the Jockey Club stakes. I think we could have quite a lot of nicer, older horses this year. And after he showed what he could do at Epsom, um, he was just stupidly well handicapped before that. But I think he could be a really nice horse to follow. He's in the Coronation Cup. I think he might be in the Chester Cup as well. He's in a whole load of things. So I'm really excited to see him. Anyone got any other eye catchers that they're looking forward to at Newmarket? Yeah, same race. Uh, Aidan's got Idaho in seventh heaven in entered. I'll be interested in either of those came over. I, I like both of them. Um, and then the daily estates, I noticed Somi Dar had an entry. Um, mm, yeah. She looked really good last season and uh, very interested to see her come back. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Tom, have you had have a look at Newmarket yet? Not so much, but I but I'm a massive uh, Seventh Heaven fan like Nick. There, I think she's going to be an absolute superstar this year. I think she'll win the King George races like that. She'll, I think she'll end up being really? an art contender. Yeah, I think she's really, really good. I'd love to see her run. She ran in Dubai and I thought it was a cracking she, run. Yeah, she ran really well in Dubai. Because the ground was all against her. She must have quick ground. I think Ascot and race tracks like that will suit her. But if it's fast at, at Newmarket, which it looks like being, I think she'd win that. She'd mm. win that hands down myself. I think she'd, she'd like the track as well. She's very strong staying filly. Um, she strikes me as one of those. Paul, anything for you in the markets? Any market movers? Uh, no real market movers for the other races, Maddie. But um, I, I like, I'm looking forward to seeing Dartmouth come back in the Jockey Club Stakes against your one. Um, Sir Michael Stout for the Jelly Bean. Um, I think Sir Michael will be trying to make him a Group One winner this season. He was third in the King George last year and second in a Canadian International. And um, I can I, I can seriously see him winning a Group One this season. Yeah, well, he's in the right hands if if that's the thing. So Michael Stout does so well at improving these older horses. Um, if we move on to Ascot on Wednesday, we have the two Group Threes, the Cigaro Stakes, which has Harbour Law, Palisata, Sweet Selection and the likes of, and the Pavilion Stakes, which um, brings Harry Angel, a horse I'm really, really excited about. He's due to run in that. Have we got any betting on any of those Ascot races yet, Paul? Yeah, just hot off the press for, for you guys, Maddie. Just for uh, us. In the Cigaro, 5-2 to two Palisata, 3 Battersea, 100-30 to 30 nearly caught, uh, Seven Harbour Law, eight Bar, and in the Pavilion, uh, Blue Point is in there at two to one favourite for Godolphin. Your Harry Angel is at four to one. Seven Seven Heavens, six to one. Seven Sir Dance a lot, and ten to one Bar. 
Oh, that's interesting to see that Harbour Law is so big. I thought after watching him win the ledger last season, he could be a, a prolific stayer this season. So it'd be interesting to see if he can go. Well, forward. it looks where we know where you're going, Maddie. Look what your <laughs> money's going on Wednesday. <laughs> I'll get the double on. Yeah, Harry exactly. Angel, Harbour Law. <laughs> um, Nick, anything take your fancy in those races? Yeah, it's, it's interesting what you said about Harbour Law. He's still being priced out because he's trained by Laura Mongan rather than somebody else. Yeah. And, and that's why there's always a few points built into his price. Um, so yeah, he could be interesting. Could well be a cup horse this season. Pavilion Stakes is a great, uh, great race. Mm -hmm. Early trial for the Commonwealth Cup. There's loads of good ones in there. So dance a lot. We didn't mention. Thought he was disappointing in Newmarket the other day, but um, he's probably going to be a sprinter. Seven Heavens is one of the Frankels I don't really like. He, he seems to be very free and, and, and pulls quite hard. Blue Point for me. I know his favourite, two to one, but um, I think he's the one they've all got to beat. I don't think he's a sprinter through and through. Glad to see they're going down that route. So it would be Blue Point for me. I, I agree with you. I do think he's a sprinter. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else has heard the same whispers that I have, but like I said, Clive Cox is absolutely mad on this Harry Angel. I think he thinks it's going to win everything and he's so good at training horses of that sort of calibre in, the, the, excuse me, in the sprinting sphere. It's a tongue twister there. Um, Tom, what are your thoughts? Uh, both the two you're talking about, Harbour Law and Harry Angel, have penalties. I think it's mm, if Harry Angel true. can beat... Blue Point, Macaris, Seven Heavens, and Sir Dance Lot, giving them four pounds it's on the first race, run of the season. It? It's yeah. a brilliant race. Mm. I think you see five or six of these in the Commonwealth Cup. I think, you know, he'll be a very short price favourite for the Commonwealth Cup if he wins that first time up. Mm. I love him. I like you. I think he's. I think he's. A, he's a great horse. I like Macaris as well for Simon Crisford. I was really impressed with him in the. Newbury race he won and then he sort of went off the ball. I don't think York suited him behind Blue Point and then didn't run so well. Uh, I th those two would be my two. I'm not a great Harbour Law fan, unfortunately, guys. I thought if he ran the St. Ledger 112 times again, he'd win one of them. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was incredibly jammy to win. Horses fell. They went too fast. Everything went right for him. That's not to say he's, it wasn't a brilliant story. I was delighted. You know, it's great when horses like that win the race, but I, I can't see him being able to give you know, a penalty away and, and win, win on top races this season. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But I think that's it. That's quite an interesting betting race, that, because uh, I think it's wide open. I think you can make cases for some of the fit ones that have been running around so far this already this season. Yeah, it looks, it looks like we're going to be treated to some really good quality racing um, straight away this week. We've also got the listed um, Paradise Stakes, which includes Mutahara. Not sure if I've pronounced that right. He's our half-brother to Muhara. Um, so that'll be interesting to see him out. Um, sticking with the flat theme, is there anyone who's got any early fancies for the Jockeys Championship? Paul, have we got any betting on that? Have you got any thoughts on who could be champion jockey this season? Um, well, we've got Sylvester D'Souza in there at Evens favourite. Paul Hannigan, 5-2, to two, having gone back up north. Andrea Razzini, 7. Jim Crowley, 8. And 12-1, to one, uh, Ryan Moore Fran and Fran Berry. I think... Um, I think Ryan Moore could be a huge price, but but it will all depend if he decides to go for it, Maddie. Yeah, I was going to say, does it? Does he care? Ryan I don't know Moore? if he does care, but um, <laughs> I, guess, I guess we'll find out later in the season if if he does and and he starts making these visits to Red Car for one or two vi uh, <laughs> rides, then uh, the twelve to one does look big to me. But Sylvester's clearly clearly the, in the pole seat and. Paul Hannigan with the Richard Farhi firepower mm. behind him um, and farming races in the north um, will also go well. But I do think 12 to 1 Ryan Moore is a, is a big price. Yeah, it's funny you say that about him going um, to you know obscure places on small days because at the start of this season he has took up some sort of a bit more unlikely rides that you, you wouldn't associate him with necessarily. Um, so it will be wise to keep an eye on him, I think. Nick, any thoughts on Flat Jockey's Championship? It's a yeah. bit early days, isn't it? Well, I think, does it start the weekend now? I think it does start, think does it so. start on Guineas Day now. Yeah, I, I think at the top end, Paul Hannigan, uh, you know, is, is, is probably the one for me. I think he'll be like a bird release, you know. I think he, he could get, get his mojo back. Uh, yeah, uh, do you uh, think it's like a confidence thing? I mean, he, I did, he was I prolific when he was I with Farley. I couldn't agree more. I think he found it all too much being down at Newmarket. I thought, he, you know, he was riding classy horses in classy races. It's a different kettle of fish. I do agree that he'll be very much suited to be going back up there. I It'll be nice right. to see, I think, old alliances reunited. Well, it's okay. It's not my favourite. I'd much rather... <laughs> I'm the sentimental one here. <laughs> I'd much rather Jim Crowley won it again or Oshin Murphy, considering I've got a few quid on them. But I do think Sylvester... Uh, I think Sylvester will win it myself, I think. Someone um, had a whisper to me once about Fran Berry. I think he's about 20 to 1. 
Tony Hind apparently said that he's under his care now and he's got some big plans for him. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. He's just quite heavy, isn't he? He, he can't mm. do too, you know, he can't ride too light. I yeah. thought O'Sheen Murphy was quite interesting, really. He's yeah. young, he's up for it, he's get, you know, he's, he's riding better than I've ever seen him this year. I know he's been suspended, he's got a suspension coming up, uh, or he's in the middle of a suspension, wherever it is. But I thought he was 20 to 1. He's the type of guy that could get on a roll, definitely. And, you know, he'd want it. He hasn't got any other, you know, he's got lots of rides, you know, he's got lots of horses he can ride. And so I was quite interested in him, but I do think Sylvester will win it. Okay. Paul, any thoughts? Um, I've already had a go at Ryan Moore. Um, it's interesting what you said about Fran Barry, um, Maddie. Um, mm-hmm. We were thirty-three to one. He's now now into twelve to one. Ah, so see, my money talks. It talks. It, it could well be shrewd <laughs> money. We realised, but um, Tony Hine, of course, um, he, uh, was behind Jim Crowley last year, and, and and they they backed him at huge prices. Richard Hughes, I think, was on at fifty to one. And and so maybe Fran Berry is the one they're going for it with this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a quick note, competition time now. Just to let you know, every Monday and Thursday in the Football Postcast, we'll be giving listeners and viewers the chance to win a £25 or €25 Euro free bet, courtesy of our sponsors, Paddy Power. Just tweet the answer using the hashtag Postcast. Today's question is, who won the jumps? trainer's title in Ireland after a thrilling tussle with Gordon Elliott. We've probably already mentioned it, and if you didn't know already, join us after this short break and you might just find out. Introducing Paddy Power's Hot Trot Jackpot, their new free-to-enter horse racing competition. Every Saturday, pick five horses in a free Lucky 31 bet for your chance to win the guaranteed £10,000 jackpot. TNC Supply, 18plusbgambleaware.org. Hello and welcome back to Monday's Racing Postcast. I'm with Nick Watts, Tom Segal and Paul Binfield of Paddy Power. We've covered some of the flat. Now we're going to go and switch back to jumps. Punchers Town was just an epic battle. To be honest, for me, I think it was one of the best festivals we've had all season. I think it was so refreshing. So many different things, so much drama, so many close finishes. Um, it was a great battle for the Trainers' Championship, won eventually by Willie Mullins. Um, let's go to you first, Nick. What was your highlight of the whole jump season? Well, I was going to give two. One of them was watch. Of <laughs> no, one, one silly one, um, or kind of silly one, because it was York Hill in the Ryanair Chase at Fairy House a few weeks ago. Because I think this was just one of those races where you were just on the edge of the uh, edge of your seat because you didn't know what he was going to do next. He started jumping out to his left. It got worse. Um, you thought, you know, a normal horse, he had no chance of winning this race. He turns into the straight. You think he is going to win this race. Mm. He almost runs out of the last. He, he he lands in a heap, comes to a standstill, still almost wins it. And it just, you know, any other horse would have been beaten 30 lengths. It, it's just an extraordinary Exceptional horse. Exceptional talent. And I think, it? you know, one to watch with relish next season to decide exactly what he's what, what he's going to do. Surely he won't run right-handed again. Um, the kind of proper, Maybe hurdles, maybe champion hurdle. Who it, knows? It, it could well be. I think that's an overreaction because I, I think he can jump he just doesn't like going right-handed um the proper one for me would be one for arthur in the grand national i, I think you very rarely see grand nationals one like that i thought derek fox gave him real balls of steel ride brilliant yeah in the olden days used to hunt them around for a circuit and then get into the race derek fox hunted his round for like the first 26 fences and, <laughs> and you didn't hear him in the commentary or, or if you'd backed him you'd, you'd be thinking where the hell is he and then he yeah. kind of he, he, he looks like he's just jumped in about three out and he goes and wins easily um to win a grand national like that and to have the the daring to do it um for mm. an inexperienced jockey who's come back off injury i thought it was great first win for scotland for ages and and one for arthur i just hope they have got a bit of ambition for this horse because he might mm. be a bit better than your ordinary grand national winner yeah, I think I'd someone lo- mentioned him for the gold cup actually i'd love to see him go down that route you could yeah. see him winning that cotswell chase at cheltenham in january one of those uh, attritional kind of races and I just hope they're not scared of pitching him in against good horses because he's a very, very good stayer, I think. Mm, I totally agree. Um, It's quite funny. I was actually at Warwick and watched him win the Classic Chase. I was with a friend who backed him for the Classic Chase and he backed him for the National. And he was cursing Derek Fox for the first circuit because he got hampered. He was like, what on earth are you doing, man? You're so far back. You, You know... You need to get a little bit closer, but I think he just he has so much confidence in the horse stability, and it's just brilliant to see it all come off like that and not necessarily be hugely popular, um, not popular, hugely you know celebrated connections have their day in the sun. Um, what about you, Tom? Your highlight of the jump season? 
Yeah, I mean, we, I got the running order for this, Maddie, and I'm going to answer the same. I've got the same answer for question six, seven, and eight. Uh, <laughs> I think I've, I did actually. <laughs> I think our Duke was by far the best performance by a chaser I've seen this season. On the season. same wavelength we are. Winning the Irish Gold Cup. I think he'll win the Gold Cup next year, and I think he's the best bet for <sighs> next year's Gold Cup. I just think he's a wonderful staying chaser. He's totally different to the ones we normally have. He reminds me of Denman. I think he's brilliant, and I think he'll win any race they want to run him in next year. You've ruined it. You've Sorry. ruined my pitch. Sorry. I'm absolutely gutted. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Paul, what about you? Um, it could be that it's only the, it's the only race that I can remember because it was last week, Maddie. But um, <laughs> Where have you been? Actually, don't answer that. <laughs> uh, Sizing John, Jack Adam and Coney Gray, they all, they all performed heroics in the uh, Punchestown Gold Cup. I think it was the right result, Sizing John. Epic. Winning. Yeah, an epic winning for the home crowd. Um, the Irish should be very proud of, of the festival they put on at Punchestown last week. I was lucky enough to be there all week, and it was brilliant. Um, but Coney Gray, what what a, what a lovely performance from him, and and uh, it was just a tremendous race, and they all they all ran with such credit. Yeah, well, if anyone knows me at all, they'll know my highlight was the King George because I am the world's biggest Thistlecrack fan and that is just the best thing I've ever seen on a race course, watching him come round that bend at Kempton. Um, so fingers crossed we can see him back season, but I am with Tom. That leads us on to question seven, which is one of the Punchestown winners was sizing John. He bravely followed up his Gold Cup win in the Punchestown Gold Cup, which we've covered. What do you expect his main challenger for major honours next season? Now, I'm just going to say exactly what Tom said. Um, I'm not a big anti-post punter. I'm not a big punter. I'm pretty awful, to be honest. But seeing size, uh, seeing our Duke win the Irish Grand National, he was given a brilliant ride, yes, um, and I thought it was quite a strong race coming into it and he absolutely smashed them to smithereens. I did a piece on trends, Irish national trends before coming into it. Um, on, on those, he had absolutely no chance. Um, and I just think he's exceptional and he's the one um, who could challenge Sizing John next season from the same stable. So they'll probably be kept apart until the Gold Cup. But that's that's fine by me as long as we get to see them both. What about you, Nick? You've just answered it for me. It's, it's our, it's our, <laughs> this is boring. It's, no. it's our duke, isn't it? Um, if I was to say something different, I'm not. If I would just turn the question around a little bit, he may not be a gold cup horse, but I'd be very interested to see what Fox Norton runs over next season. What trip they go over mm -hmm. with him? Um, he stayed very well um, when he won at Aintree, didn't he? Um, and he came Loved back to two miles at Punchestown. It's probably against him, but his class got him through. Um, now, Colin Tizard has mentioned the King George for him. I'd be. Interested. I'd love to see him in the King George. I'd, I'd, I think I'd, that's really interesting. Yeah, I'd be interested to see him run over three miles. He, he just really impressed me the last couple of starts, particularly. I was up at Aintree when he won and saw him in the paddock, and he looked fantastic. And um, you know, he was he was showing signs of doing this with Neil Mulholland, and then Colin Tizard's just taken him over, and he, he's gone on to another level. So. Very interested to see what he does next season. The Gold Cup trip it's might just be a bit too far. similar sizing John but... scenario. I agree with you. I think the King George is probably the race to find out with him. But it is. It's a similar, you know, similar scenario to the one that sizing John had. And as everyone's been saying, these good three mile chasers usually do have form over two miles. So who knows? Tom, I, I'm Maddie. I think this is. We always say it every year, don't we? We can't wait for next jump season and whatever happens. But I think we're going to, you know, the King George next year could be just a race for the ages. Sizing John Thistle, crack, Fox Norton. And we haven't even mentioned my superhero, uh, Mike Bite. I think oh, round Kempton, he's unbeatable. I really do. I, I've never been more impressed with a, with a horse than when he fell that day in the Feltham. He was sensational. He was. I thought he'd gone off about four. I thought Daryl Jacob had gone nuts. I thought he'd gone mm. off so fast that there was no way he could possibly pick up again. And then he was coming, running down to last. He was still sprinting. Mm. I could not believe it. I thought he was brilliant at Cheltenham. I didn't expect Chel him to like Cheltenham. Uh, Aintree was a little bit below par, but he still won. And he, I just think he's exceptional. I cannot wait to see the King George, because if you have him, Thistle Crack, Sizing John, Fox Norton, uh, maybe Underso, who I think has been crying out for a trip like that, Jack Adam, Conagri, what a race that would be. I'm... A, I'm, I'm I'm fully in the uh, Mike Pike camp, but uh, having backed him at a big price a few weeks ago, every other day some other horse comes out and throws his hat in the ring. And it just, mm. you know, I love the King George. It's totally different to the Gold Cup. It's a test of speed, test of jumping. It's totally different. We can't lose Kempton. I mean, that's a no. different kettle of fish, but we cannot lose the King George. But whatever, that race could be the highlight of 
next season of any season. I think it's potentially a brilliant race and I'd love to see Mike Pike win it. Mm. He was he was exceptional at, at Kempton in the Felton before he fell. For me, I've sort of thought that the horses he's been beating, you know, Whisper's very admirable, but I would like to see him beat a little bit more quality before backing him for something like the King George. But he was, you know, the style in which he did it, he's just all class. And again, you've always got that willy won't he what problem he's going to have. I just think I just think some of the, these jump races are won in the first mile, a lot of them. They're mm. won by pace, they're won by speed, they're won by, you know, especially the good ones, the good mm -hmm. three-mile chases. I just think nothing will live with him. I really don't. I think Thistlecrack's probably the only horse that will live with him, really, over the first few fences. And I, I, I just, I think it's just sensational, that race. It has the potential to be brilliant. Mm. I'm biased, but honestly, if Thistlecrack turns up in anything like his form, he will absolutely pulverise them. Um, have you got any thoughts on this, Paul? Who can challenge Sizing John next year? Well, um, I, d I think Kona Greer is a huge price at 25 to 1 for the Cheltenham Gold Cup, Maddie. Um, uh, if, mm -hmm. if he hadn't made that small mistake at the second last at Punchestown, who knows? Um, he, he fought back after that. He proved he went on good ground as well, and he didn't need it an absolute bog, I thought. Yeah, no, that, that, that's absolutely right. I think uh, 25 to 1 is a big price for somebody who got so close to um, sizing John there. And, and I'm thoroughly looking forward to seeing him again next year. Pleased to, pleased to see that the trip to the vets in the evening didn't, didn't throw yeah. up any major concerns. And absolutely. A summer at grass... Um, I think he'll be he'll be a, a force again next year. I agree. Someone said to me, "Who would Nico ride, Mike Bite or Coney Green?" Now, obviously, I'm uh, sure he'd probably ride Mike Bite because of his relationship with Nicky Henderson. But I think I'm totally with you. I think Coney Green, you know, he has been lightly raced because he's had his problems. But I don't think it would be beyond him um, to run a massive race in the Gold Cup. But obviously, it's all depending on when he gets there or not. Right, we've sort of covered this already, but if I just ask you quick fire, what's your best bet for next year's jump season? Me, I've said it, our Duke, I don't often bet anti-post, but if he gets there in one piece, the Gold Cup, will he'll marry brilliantly to the Gold Cup demands. Um, what about you, Nick? Well, because it's so far in advance, I thought I'd look at this a, a slightly different way, and I'd, I'd look at the Jockeys' Championship betting for the jumps oh, um, right. after Sandown. Because I just felt Richard Johnson, he, he was a good winner again this season, but I just thought he was treading water a little bit, and I don't think it's beyond the realms that somebody like Coleman or Twiston Davis or a Brian Hughes... I think Aidan Coleman's absolutely phenomenal. ...challenges him this season, mm. because, uh, yeah, like a, he did, just didn't run away with it. He just did enough. Um, Brian Hughes is the interesting one for me, because I think he's got the field clear up north, um, I think he's taken a major leap forward in the season just gone. I think he'll be the go-to man in the northern half of the country. He got a ride in the Grand National for Paul Nichols, which is quite interesting. It didn't quite work out for Trevor him. Trevor Hemmings, yeah. Exactly. Um, and I think he could, this could be the season where, if he's got any ambition at all, he could say to himself... I'm sure he his, does. <laughs> yeah, and his agent, whatever. Look, you know, Richard might be vulnerable here. If we can get off to a decent start and keep parity with him over the summer, we can have a chance in the winter because he's going to mop up at these northern meetings. So... Brian Hughes really to win the jockey's title. Yeah, not bad. Tom? Not bad. It was awesome. Well done, Nicholas. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tom. What price is he, Paul? Yeah, Paul, what price um, can we get? Yeah, it's not on the running order, Nick, but bear with me and come back to me. <laughs> we'll get to Tom Thanks, next. Nick. Thanks, Nick. Uh, I like Fiona to win whatever. <gasps> Love I, her. Well, I think she might win the Neptune next year. I think the Neptune... We need to stop agreeing. I absolutely I, I love, love her. Uh, I, I, I thought she was exceptionally good, but both days, and she stays well. She's from a strong-staying family. I can't see any... Uh, Gordon Elliott likes running his mares, doesn't he, in those neptunes and supreme i think she, she's going to be uh, she's going to really stay as well i think so i yeah. think that's the race for her. i thought I, I think she was 16 to 1 or something the other day i thought that was a big price for a horse that's won the cheltenham and punchstown bumpers in incredibly impressive style normally you get one of these bumper winners whatever price they whatever you know even if they've you know i remember a few of those horses that got thrashed coming into the supreme and the uh, neptune and being short prices on the day simply because everyone remembers the bumper from last year i think mm. she's a big price yeah, Paul, have we found any jumps have, jockeys um, championship yeah. and have you got your own bet of next season? I have first, yeah, I think Jack Adam at 10 to 1 for the King George is, is um, a bit of value in. Oh my no, God. No, oh, there no, you go. No. There we you just go. cut a collective <laughs> groan from all members of the yeah, panel. Well, you, you can groan. We'll, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see on Boxing Day next year. But, I mean, people keep saying he's not quite top class. Um, 
he, he, he won a grade one at Punchestown this season. He was never beaten more than three and a quarter lengths in the Lexus, the Gold Cup, beating a short head in the Punchestown Gold Cup. So, anyway, I, I like Jack Adam, and I think he deserves a big one. Uh, Sam Twiston Davis is, is an 11-2 shot, but... For Nick Aiden Coleman, fourteen to one could be a bit of value. No, it's Brian Hughes. Oh, cool. Brian Hughes was <laughs> Come on, I, I, you went on so long, Nick. Oh, uh, you, swi- you um, switched off. You switched off. Yeah, Brian Hughes is six to one. Six to one. Oh, can we back? Can we, can we back Coleman now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bored after hearing about Jack Adam. I'm sorry. There's so many more exciting horses to get your hopes pinned up on. Jack Adam, I'm not having that. We get a lot of Twitter abuse now, don't we, for, for tips just putting up Jack Adam in the paper. Yeah, right. It's not me. I'm about the only one, but it's not me. <laughs> right, we're not going to get into that. Um, finally, last bullet point is this week we'll be running a series in the paper asking readers whether they prefer the flat or the jumps. So, come on, chaps, which do you prefer and why with me? It's fairly obvious. I'm a flat gal through and through. Uh, flat jumps gal through and through, sorry. I can't say. stand the flat. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, no, I think, you know, Menorah represented uh, why I like the jumps so much over the weekend. Um, and I just think the longevity of the stars, you know, I'm sentimental. I, I just love the jumps. I love the flat as well, but the, the jumps is where my heart's at. Yeah, I'd not, not, not completely agree. And I like the shape of the season as well, because October to April, essentially, it is, isn't it? And so it's quite a short time frame, so you've got big things coming up all the time. The flat, to me, just, I do love it. But by the time August, September comes around, I've reached kind of saturation level, because we've got mm. the evening racing, the morning, noon, and night, and you were just willing the old jumpers to come back again. So, yeah, for me, it's the jumps. I love how Tom, when I made my mistake, was just disgusted. He's like, I know you. You, you like the jumps. <laughs> it's absolutely diabolical. Um, well, which for you, Tom? It's, I'm going to sit on the fence here. About, no, the, you can't. At, at the start of each season, about now, I cannot wait for the flat. I love the 2,000 guineas. The 2,000 guineas is just a brilliant race. It's the sort of, you know, I'm one of those nerds that spends lots of time thinking about horse racing. And, you know, when, when I'm on those quiet winter's days, when I'm walking my greyhounds or whatever, I sit there and I think uh, about what horse might be brilliant for the 2000 guineas it's the same with the hennessy you should be at hennessy... Presbury park you shouldn't be walking <laughs> greyhounds in the middle of the winter get to Cheltenham. and uh, you know and, I, and it's the same with the hennessy the hennessy does it for me every year of a jumps so i spend hours thinking about that and then obviously cheltenham and punchtown and aintree but, but and aintree they're all brilliant festivals but i like them both i mean uh, to be honest i get a bit sick of sprint handicaps and big field handicaps on the flat i get a bit sick of the fact that the the whip bread on Sasse or the Pet 365 on Sasse has 12 runners and the bottom weight is 126 and no one will run in the Chel- you know everyone wants to go to Cheltenham and not mm. run in the Betfair hurdle and the Bet 365 and all those other brilliant races that I grew up with I find that a bit annoying from the jump season I think there's too many opportunities for good horses and good handicappers now so I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I like them both I like them both there's parts mm. I like of the flat there's parts I like of the jump there's parts I don't like of either but you know, I, I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I like one more than the other. There's, at this stage, I'm, a, I'm fully into the flat. Yeah, um, I think we could sit here for hours and debate, you know, pros and cons of each code. Paul, what about you? Are you flat or a jumps man? And please don't sit on the fence like Tom. <laughs> OK, well, if you pushed me, Maddie, I'd say flat. But I do think this question, it reminds me of when David Ellsworth was asked um, to compare one of his good horses against another. And he said, well, I can't really do that. It's a bit like women. Um, when, Careful now. Yes, yeah, steady no, on. When you go with a woman, they're all pretty good at the time. You can't really say <laughs> one's better than another. And um, <laughs> listen, I like being at Cheltenham in March, but equally, I like being at Royal Ascot in June, probably the latter, because the weather's usually better. Easily pleased. Absolutely. <laughs> right, it's OK. Not quite how I would have put it, Paul, but we well, get your drift. <laughs> yes. And on that bombshell, <laughs> I think this would be a good point to end today's postcast. Um, thank you all for listening. Don't forget to take part in our competition for the chance to win a free £20 or €20 Euro bet. Who won the Jumps Trainers Championship in Ireland? We've covered it. You should know it. Tweet your answer using the hashtag postcast. And we're back on Friday with our weekend tipping postcast. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Nick, Tom, Paul. Thank you. Paddy Power stream all UK and Irish racing live on your mobile, tablet or PC. Unlike some other high street bookies, Paddy Power, you beauty.